I am just trusting this relatively new to me technology. I hope that it's working <laughs> and that you can see me and yeah okay so um now i want to be mindful of the time and just while i'm talking about time i will just mention here that my intention i'm imagining that this practice you know i'm going to be describing it um kind of like the deluxe expanded version of it as I'm going to be talking a little bit about the theory along with the practice of doing it. So it may end up taking, you know, 15, 20 minutes or something like that. Um, and when you kind of get the hang of it, um, then you can practice this like in just an, I want to say in an instant, <laughs> but it, um, yeah, oh, sorry, I just got a little notice that, hmm, that to check my internet connection. And my internet connection is about as good as it can be, so I'm just going to dismiss that. And I hope that you can see me and hear me okay. And, yeah, and, you know, I'm also happy to connect um, in person with this or... You know, there's other possibilities. I just thought that doing this uh, live as a guided practice would be kind of a fun way of going about it. Um, I also, there's also the opportunity to have an audio recording um, of this guided practice so that you can just follow along. You could download it um, so that you can practice it on your own, um, even when you're offline. Um, and, and I'm also happy to write up um, like a little template um, so that even... Um, sometimes like having a template it can be nice to even just you know see the bullet points um, so that you know how to guide yourself through it um, and as well um, you can even record your own uh, little audio recording as like a voice memo on your phone because um, sometimes hearing yourself guide yourself through an, uh, a practice um, can be really powerful too. So if you are, if that's something that's interesting to you, that you would love to have a copy of like an audio of this practice that you can download um, and, and or um, a written template um, outlining um, the steps, then I'm really happy to send that to you. Um, so you can, you can either um, type a comment about it um, or send me a direct message and uh, despite me using Facebook here for this particular live stream um, I am not super diligent about being on Facebook every day I don't have it on my phone um, and so um, the fastest way to reach me is always by emailing me directly uh, which is dove at meadowdove.ca so again, D-O-V-E at M-E-A-D-O-W-D-O-V-E dot C-A. Alrighty. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to jump into this practice here with you. And I am curious um, if you are, you know, actually whether you're watching this live or whether you're accessing this as a recording, I would love to hear whether, because this, this practice can be used in, in a few different ways. It's the same practice, but it has a multitude of benefits. And so I'm kind of curious whether it was like the energetic boundaries um, that really drew you into being curious about uh, learning this practice with me, or whether it was the ability to amplify our own um, self-healing capabilities and really speed up healing. Um, or um, the idea of being able to really stay connected with and allow yourself to like receive so that as you're in a you know naturally giving role even if you're just like holding space um, that you are continuing to be replenished um, so that when you're in a in a giving way you're not depleting yourself in that process so this practice can be great for all of those things and I would love to hear you know which one feels like the most relevant for you at this time um, so again with all of these um, you know inquiries uh, of from me 
to you. Uh, you can either uh, direct message me, you can comment if you're feeling, you know, brave and happy to share it out there, um, or you can always email me, dove at meadowdove.ca. Alrighty, so, um, so I want to clarify that um, with this practice, there's going to be kind of like a main practice, and there's like another little like kind of mini practice that helps to set us up for that main practice. Um, and so either of these practices can be used actually as their own standalone um, practices. And um, yeah, and the first one, actually, actually they both, the, both of them are, um, they do have a lot of similarities in a lot of the benefits. And so, um, so I'm just gonna dive right in. <laughs> so this first one, I really love doing this before and between um, every session that I am working with one-on-one -on -one with people or even when I'm doing group work, I really love to do this to help set myself up um, and to kind of clear myself and to help myself still feel you know connected to receiving support um, even as I'm in the midst of a session. Um, and so, so yeah, so the, this is the, the first one. I usually do this first one, um, standing up. Um, but just because if I am standing up, I'm kind of like my head gets cut off here. I'm feeling like it might be more helpful for me to just do it, to just demonstrate it sitting down. So you can still see like most of where my arms are. Um, but you can feel free to, if you're, um, you know, following along and you're in a place where you're able to move freely, uh, you can feel free to stand up. And so with this, whether you are sitting down or standing up, I first invite you, you know, just to, if you just look around your environment, wherever you happen to be, if this is just really calming for the nervous system, signaling to the nervous system that you're in a safe space, that it's okay for you to let the distractions fade into the background so that you can stay focused within yourself and your own practice here for this the next few moments. So you can keep your eyes open or close them, whatever feels best for you. Oftentimes when I'm doing this practice for myself, I have my eyes closed um, to be able to help me focus, but I've also done this practice, um, both of these practices with my eyes open. And I certainly, you know, the second one in particular, I do it with my eyes open all the time because I often am doing it um, while I'm actively engaged in my appointments, while I'm listening to people, and also even just while I'm out in public in certain situations where I feel like I need to kind of re-bolster myself, um, then I'll do it, um, you know, just behind the scenes. I'm breathing, doing it, and nobody else knows. <laughs> So this also, I'll just say, you know, this is an energetic practice. And so here we get to like suspend our disbelief. I find that these practices both work really well for me. Um, and I know that, you know, uh, working with energy is often beyond the realms of like logical explanation. And so I just, you know, invite you to um, be with these practices with a sense of curiosity and, you know, giving it a try and with an open mind and open heart and, and see, see what you notice for yourself. Um, notice what you notice, uh, honor what shows up and uh, trust, trust yourself, trust your inner wisdom. Okay, so with this first one, I love to include our movement. And so, Wherever you are, first of all, just bringing your awareness to the surface underneath you. So whether you're standing or whether you're sitting, I invite you to allow yourself to notice those points of contact underneath you and allow yourself to receive that support. So actually, sometimes I'll start this practice by bringing my hands to my heart center, just as a way of helping myself to center, to come into my center. And then I'll reach one hand up while I'm reaching the other hand down, just really acknowledging um, the support of earth and of the sun up above and how those energies can meet within me 
and then taking the other hand, balancing out, letting those energies come back to center. And this is a three part practice. I like to do three breaths to link the three parts. And so with the arm movements that correspond, it's just like really stretching open wide here. This first one, I love to be able to feel that I am just letting go, almost like draining out of my body anything that's no longer serving me, that's not going to be of service in this upcoming interaction, in this moment right now. So just letting it go, composting it, giving it back to the earth. And then with the next breath, I'm really welcoming in 100% benevolent energy, any support, fresh air, the sunshine, like all the support available to me and to my body to just support me through my session, through this moment, through the day. And then this third one, it's really inviting in um, the sense of boundaries. So I love to think of it kind of like mithril, like the magical, uh, you know, chain mail. It's, I love the idea that it's very flexible and that it's just outlining me and my body. And so I'm like activating it all the way down. And this uh, magical uh, protective layer is a, I love to think of it as a semi-permeable membrane. So it lets love in both directions um, and anything else, it just like blocks and it just stops. So sometimes I find that it's helpful to imagine it like incinerating upon contact or vaporizing um, or like almost as though if like mud is getting slung my way, that it's just like like hitting the glass and just like smearing down <laughs> to get given back to the earth the master composter the earth is able to transmute what no longer serves us back into the most helpful nourishment um, for us just like the compost it's amazing so so this is like i'm calling this part one but really you can use this as its own standalone practice and even if I don't have the the space or the you know if I'm in a public space and I don't want to do those big arm movements you know just imagining that my arms are moving in that way I find really helpful um I just like visualizing it internally um so so that is one um, that's one practice that you can use and it has a lot of the same benefits. Again, the three, the three parts to that, um, okay, well, three plus the four. So like there's the setup where you're just acknowledging the support, allowing yourself to receive the support underneath you, allowing yourself to feel grounded and, um, and then, yeah. And then the three, the three breaths are to release um, so I find this really helpful, especially if I'm coming into an appointment where I've just, you know, had an intense conversation with somebody um, pr just prior to this appointment or, you know, I'm wanting to switch from one session to another and I don't want to like bring any of that energetically along with me into the new session. It's like a great opportunity just to like, just to feel it clearing um, so that I can be really present. Um, or yeah, you know, like things like that. And then, and then the second part is allowing to receive that support. So again, being open to receiving that hundred percent benevolent support that's available. Um, you know, uh, my personal belief is that there is more, um, within our universe than we can currently uh, comprehend or um, understand necessarily with our logical brain. And so, you know, just being open to the support from life itself, um, which I feel like is often coordinating a lot of those synchronicities and, you know, some of that magic of life. So, um, so allowing um, myself to receive any support um, you know, as I do feel like personally for me, I feel like I'm at my best when I am being a channel for that divine unconditional love for like, you know, source to like work through me. Um, so yeah, so here I'm just 
just it's a, it's a little vulnerable to share because I don't usually talk about it like this with people um you know because there's there's a little bit of that like oh my gosh people are gonna think I'm crazy if I'm talking like this but I'm just telling you how it is for me you're allowed to have your beliefs whatever they are and uh, this is what works for me so um so yeah and again um the third part to that very important is that sense of an energetic boundary I really love I love the word mithril um, because it's like that magical membrane um, and I love to imagine it like a semi-permeable membrane letting all the goodness all the unconditional love pouring out of me and you know good vibes coming towards me as well letting that through and on both sides just like letting anything else just like not pass through that so it's like there's like a yeah, so that membrane um, isn't going to let in um, anything to me that is not um, kind. Um, and same thing, if I'm feeling upset about something, like, that's not going to um, escape my boundary <laughs> to then bleed out to, like, anybody else. So, okay, so that's one part, so or one practice, which, again, can be its own standalone. Uh, what really inspired me to do this, uh, to offer this with you, is the, is the second practice. So this second one, um, I often use this when I'm right in the midst of a session. So rather than sort of like setting myself up for a session, um, I will use it like when I'm right, like, I call it like in the trenches, you know, like especially when there's something that's really emotionally charged, um, so it can be, I, I really, um, love to use it like when I'm working with people, but also I've noticed that it can be really helpful just like out there in the world. Um, cause there are plenty of opportunities, um, to, you know, practice a little bit of self care as we are amidst potentially challenging situations and especially challenging interactions with other people, whether we are directly interacting with them or even when we're just observing an intense reaction, um, and an intense interaction that other people are having and we want to not only like safeguard ourselves but also in our own way um, even if it's unspoken and even if it's off to the side um, I love to feel like I'm a helpful force in the world um, and as I'm sure you can relate to and um, thank goodness for you know so many people behind the scenes just like trying their best to do the best and to be a helpful force in the world and so, um, and like without depleting themselves, like without depleting myself, I feel like this is such an important part of it because what I know, um, you know, with people who are like kind and generous and want to be helpful is that it's so easy to de get depleted, um, to get tired. I mean, there is like no shortage of need for, um, you know, help in the world. Um, and um, it's great to remember that, you know, as we are giving, we're also getting to receive so that in that way, um, what we're giving isn't necessarily giving like of our own life force, like depleting us. But again, we're like being a conduit for the power of good um, to come through us. Okay, so let's dive into this next practice. And I'm just gonna offer a little bit of theory as we're going into this, where um, some of the, now I've been, I've been doing this practice for so long, somebody asked me like, oh, where did I learn this? And I'm like, I don't even, I don't even remember. Like, I don't even remember if it was, I, I feel like it was a practice that I developed myself that was, Kind of an amalgamation of different um, practices and learnings like I, I'm just I'm such a lifelong learner in the realms of healing and um, and so I've I've done a lot a lot of studies of various different kinds um, from various different traditions um, and I feel like for me um, you know I like to take a lot of information and then kind of you know, put it together in a way that works for me, that makes sense for me. Um, kind of like um, making, you know, when I'm cooking, I often don't just look at one recipe. I'll usually look at a few different recipes. And then I have like, you know, all this inspiration and different guidelines from these different recipes. 
and then I kind of end up getting to put it together in a way that suits my taste. <laughs> and so, um, so part of this I know was influenced by my work in Reiki, and part of this was definitely influenced um, by my studies in yoga, and it does kind of um, piggyback onto some of the yogic anatomy philosophy, energetic anatomy philosophy. Um, and yeah, and so, and, and also just like trying it and practicing it for years, like for decades, um, and just seeing, you know, I've kind of developed my own relationship to this practice. And I use it pretty much every day. So it serves me really well. And I've been sharing it with some of the people that I work with one-on-one -on -one lately. And I've just been really feeling that the more people that have access to tools like this, the better. And so I've been feeling inspired to share it on a, on a bigger level. And so here I am sharing it with you now. So this practice um, piggybacks onto the awareness of Shushumna Nadi, which is in yogic uh, anatomy. Um, the central energy channel that actually follows very um, similarly to the spinal cord. So like deep within our center in like a vertical vertical way. So it connects through our torso. Um, you know, with yoga, it's like the chakra, it connects with the chakras, um, which are kind of like beads on this chain. And also similarly to the spinal cord, it um, it's the central energy channel that also like branches out has smaller branches coming off of it and and um energetically it's not only like within our body but then it has connection points you know um anchoring us down to the earth as well as like a thread connection point um that reaches up to the heavens um, i like to um, think of it as the sun because to me that feels really accessible um, but for some it may feel um, more appropriate to imagine that it's even like you know out there to the heavens to the universe to source itself like you know whatever feels like it resonates for you as far as language goes i'm gonna just give myself a little sip of water before i really um, go through this practice because water is a great conduit of energy and so when we're doing energy work it's really important to stay super well hydrated so feel free to pause and take a sip of water <clears throat> I'm gonna close my eyes just to keep myself really focused here and again you can do this with your eyes open or closed and so again wherever you are I invite you to let any distractions fade into the background while you give yourself the gift of your aware presence in this moment. Bringing your awareness to the surface underneath you, just acknowledging and allowing yourself to receive that support. Allowing yourself to be centered within yourself. So if you have been you know, feeling a bit scattered or have a lot of things on the go that you're juggling, I just invite you to set those aside for a moment so that you can allow yourself to return to your center, to allow yourself to be anchored within your own experience, within your own being. Recognizing, of course, that we are a part of a bigger interconnected web of life and we have access to a source of knowledge that is greater than even that which lives in our head. And here I invite again this awareness down to the earth below. Feeling our connection with the earth and how gravity is just always helping us to stay anchored with the earth. And bringing your awareness to your center. And here I would like to bring a special awareness to this Shushumna Nadi, the central energy channel that you may imagine like a thread, or I like to imagine it like a big hose, <laughs> and 
nice and big and strong, this beautiful, bright, shining hose within me, which is really allowing for a clear, clear flow of energy, clear passage of the energy throughout myself and my body. And so you may enjoy imagining that it's like sparkling within you. And at the base of the pelvis here, just noticing how the connection of the Shushumna Nadi has connection points so that that thread continues beyond the physical body and really helps to anchor us to the earth. And this anchor is strong and penetrates down through the layers of the earth's crust. And it continues down and down and down until you feel that connection with that bright molten core of the earth, that really beautiful, like vibrant vitality that is the earth's energy. And that's where we are anchored with that connection. So you may offer a moment of appreciation for that connection. And recognizing that that connection is just part of us being alive on this planet at this time, that there's nothing that you need to do to like earn it or deserve the support of the earth. It simply exists as part of our agreement with being human on this planet that at this time we get to receive the support of the earth. And so I invite you to allow that connection to allow yourself to receive that connection as like a two-way connection where you can send some appreciation down to the earth and likewise you can draw up energy from the earth and just by allowing yourself to be open to receiving it you can invite it within just like a, a tree receiving nourishment from its roots I invite you to just allow yourself to be open to receiving it within you. And now we're going to bring our, with that connection firmly established and we're nice and rooted and anchored and grounded, then I invite you to also bring the awareness up to, you know, the crown of the head, the top of the head where the Shushumna Nadi then joins with the energy above. So again, um, I love to imagine it like that we're just, you know, the thread continues and I love connecting with the sunshine, which is always shining even when it's cloudy and even when it's nighttime, the sun is still shining. And even if we are temporarily facing away, like when it's night, um, we know that we are still connected with the sun as we are, you know, spinning around in our solar system as the sun is anchoring us here as well. And so as you are acknowledging this connection that we have with the sun, then you may also enjoy offering it a little sprinkle of appreciation. And allowing this to also be a two-way connection. So again, um, there's nothing you need to do to like earn it or deserve it or be worthy of it. You know, I just invite you, just like a flower opening its petals to the sunshine, you know, just allowing yourself to open up to receiving that 100% benevolent, beautiful, supportive energy of the sun, allowing it to come down into you. And now that we've been talking about the vertical center, there's also you know, um, looking at it another way with our, again, drawing on the chakra system, our heart center is like the middle chakra. So it's really like our center as well. 
And, you know, our heart is also the place of unconditional love that lives within each and every one of us. Even if we're not able to like express that fully outward in the world, like just knowing that it does exist. It is there. And for some of us, it may be very easy to access and for some it may be more challenging and that's okay. And so here I invite that as these two energies are coming in, they're meeting in your heart center, which is also like the master pump of the physical body. And so really just like how the heart helps to pump the blood throughout our body, I invite you to allow yourself to kind of like invoke that action so that you are allowing the energy to come in and it's flooding your central energy channel and it's flooding the heart and allowing your heart to fill up with this support from above and below. And allowing it to continue to expand throughout the body. So again, I love to connect with the breath with this practice. So I inhale and allow the energy to come in and I exhale and allow it to spread throughout my body. Inhaling, inviting it in, exhaling, allowing it to spread throughout my body. So I'm gonna be quiet just while I'm practicing a couple rounds of this and I invite you to practice as well. Inhaling. Inviting in the support from below and from above, letting it intermingle in the heart, spreading it throughout your body. On the exhale, inhale, bringing it in. Exhale, letting it expand throughout your body. And as you are continuing to practice this, you may notice that, sorry, I just got a little distracted because my dog just came in. But um, so as you are inviting this energy to intermingle in your heart, you may notice it's kind of nice to have it pick up a little bit of that appreciation or even picking up a little bit of that unconditional love that lives within your heart and allowing that to spread throughout your body so that it's really getting to any areas that may need it most. So again, inhaling, inviting in that support, letting it intermingle with the appreciation that lives in your heart and letting it spread throughout your body, really acknowledging and appreciating all the behind the scenes work that your body is doing all day, every day to just keep you moving and grooving. Inhaling, amplifying it, exhaling it, letting it expand. Sometimes I find it helpful to imagine it's almost like a big bellows with the breath. And so here's my, I don't know if you can see the wagging tail. <laughs> There's my dog, <laughs> Juniper. So, yeah. So as you continue this practice, you may start to feel yourself like filling up with this energy. For me, it feels like, you know, filling up with this light, filling up with this support. A lot of the time it feels like really warm and just really loving. And so again, as I'm emphasizing, just really letting yourself fill yourself up. Noticing how, you know, if there may be some parts where you might notice there's some resistance to accepting this support or this light. There may be some parts that feel like they're not necessarily ready to receive, you know, and that's okay. Just allowing yourself to receive, allowing yourself to see if even just by your awareness of and acknowledgement of these places where it may feel a little more difficult to receive this unconditional support. Just noticing if that softens a bit. 
if that helps to melt or you know just wrapping a bit of that resistance in some love and it's okay And again, just the bringing the awareness back to just really continuing to let yourself feel that energetic replenishment. And so that as you build this up, it allows you to start to vibrate at a certain frequency. Like it allows you to resonate with the quality of this practice. And this is where it starts to be a positive influence on others without you depleting yourself in the process because you're literally like filling yourself up and in filling yourself up and in helping yourself to really manage your own energy then it naturally rubs off on everyone around you <laughs> even without you having to say a word. Just like how when there are when there's a room full of guitars and you know one guitar string is plucked at a certain, you know, it starts resonating at a certain vibration. And then the other guitars in the room will actually start to play that note as they also start to uh, resonate with that vibration. And so we have this quality uh, with humans as well. Um, where we start to pick up on each other's vibration and we start to resonate with that vibration. And so this comes in so handy when we're working with people and when we're in energetic situations, like when we're in situations where the energy um, is discordant, um, we can just be filling ourselves up and filling ourselves up and filling ourselves up so that we're taking care of nourishing ourselves and really allowing ourselves to be filled up with that beautiful vibration, filling ourselves up to overflowing with that energy. And as we are really strong in that practice, then it will influence the other people around us too. I feel like I should really let my dog outside. So I'm going to do that and I will be back in one moment. Thank you for your patience. The magic of being live <laughs> already. Okay, so so yeah, so that's that is pretty much the practice. And um, yeah, thanks for being here with me with this this uh, for a little longer than I had originally thought. But anyway, um, just trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say about it. And I guess also, you know, if you have any questions about it, I'm really happy to hear the questions. Yeah, and so whether you want to leave a comment um, or if you want to direct message me or you can email me directly, dove at metadove.ca. M e a d o w d o v e dot c a. <laughs> uh, with any questions um, or comments, I would love to hear any feedback that you have. And as well, you know, this idea of being able to keep ourselves replenished, to keep our our own um, energetic boundaries really strong, and to keep ourselves like really nourished, and replenished and supported, even amidst um, challenging circumstances and even amidst, you know, continuing to be a helpful, su supportive force in the world. Um, I just love talking with people about this stuff. 
and supporting people with it as well. And um, yeah, and so I have some other opportunities if you wanted to work with me further with this. Um, I have some really exciting opportunities coming up um, that I'm super happy to talk about um, at, uh, yeah, and I wonder, I wonder if I can even like, I have a, oh, do, do, do. <laughs> Did you see that? I wonder if you saw that. Oh, uh, oh, okay, yeah. So I see the question, how do you do it quietly to yourself in a room full of people? Yeah, and like it, it can be a room full of people. It can be a room with one person. Like I had, I was on an appointment this morning with somebody and they started getting really like emotionally charged as they were like talking about a situation in their life. And I was just like, okay, I was like, I was just like, you know, and I, you know, we're all allowed to breathe in each other's company. <laughs> and so I just use my breath so that with every breath, I'm like, I'm like, I, I do like that quick acknowledgement of that, like acknowledging the support above and below. And then I just, I inhale and allow myself to feel that um, energy coming in and that support coming in to my heart center and then I exhale and allow it to expand. So I just do that as my breathing cycle. So I'll just, you know, when I was, if, for example, in my appointment with my the person, you know, I'm, I'm like sitting there, I'm like acknowledging and I'm nodding and I'm listening. Um, sometimes I'm talking with them as well, but it's like in the background, it's like every breath. It's like, um, I'm, you know, I'm inhaling, charging up and exhaling, filling my own body up, inhaling, charging it up, exhaling, filling my own body. And in that way, it's, um, you know, for me, it feels like an antidote to like kind of that idea of like taking on other people's stuff because there is this like expansive quality to it where I'm literally like on the inside pushing out and I'm like, I'm so strong in my own light that there's no mud that can get flung on me, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know? So, um, so yeah, so I just, I, I personally find using my breath really, really helpful. I would say you don't necessarily have to use your breath to be able to just be energetically concentrating or focusing on it behind the scenes. But I find that the breath for me really helps to keep me focused and it really helps me with this practice so that I can do it with my eyes open um, no matter where I am. And same thing like with that connection with the earth, you know, that energetic connection still exists even when we're flying in a plane, you know, we don't necessarily have to be on the surface of the earth to be still connected with the earth. So, um, so yeah, so I'm curious, um, does that feel like it answers to your uh, question? You could give me a little thumbs up if it feels, or if you feel like you want further clarification, um, I'm super happy to be able to um, continue talking about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I am gonna, just in the comments, I think I can, yeah, I'm just gonna pop a link to, um, yeah, so one of the offerings that I have um, coming up this autumn, um, and I'm super excited about, um, Okay, perfect. Yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then I'm excited about this autumn is just to, um, I believe it is high time that we redefine what it means to be self-centered because I really believe that allowing ourselves to be centered within ourselves, within our own experience of being alive, you know, there's so many things that are constantly trying to like pull us this way and that, being pulled in a million directions. And it feels like it's like that much more important to really be able to hold our center and to be able to be anchored within ourselves, to really be able to hear our inner wisdom and yeah, and to be able to, um, you know, shift patterns that may no longer be serving us. You know, a, a lot of the really kind, generous people that I love to work with 
you know, have a really hard time prioritizing their own self-care. Um, and I learned really early on in my massage therapy practice that I absolutely had to take care of my body. Otherwise, like I would have to take um, time off work. And so like to heal um, if I w overdid it. And, um, you know, and I feel like that's such a great, um, just small example of how, you know, in that way, like, um, putting other people's needs above my own ended up getting into getting me into situations where I couldn't help anybody, you know, like I couldn't take any appointments, uh, when I had to take time off to let my physical, let my physical body heal from doing too many appointments. So I feel like that, um, I really see that a lot, you know, where people, um, have a hard time, uh, you know, being able to say no, um, you know, to, to other people without feeling guilty um, and to be able to spend time um, for themselves. Um, you know, I know so many people who are just like, oh my gosh, it just feels so selfish to like spend that time or that energy for myself. And like, I totally get it. Um, and um, I really do believe that if we are truly wanting to be a really helpful force in the world, it's like the most important thing is that we do take care of our own maintenance, you know, so that we can continue to be a helpful force in the world because we can't help anybody when we're burned out. So, um, so in that way, you know, self-care is really like one of the biggest acts of service. Um, and I just feel like it's high time that we really start to change the cultural paradigm around that. Um, and so if that is something that is interesting to you, like I am so excited to be gathering a small group um, together to be able to do this work. And um, yeah, and so I'm going to pop the link for that um, in case you wanted to check that out um, down below in the comments. Um, and you can find out Oh, I'm trying to remember if I did put that on my website. It may, it may, it may not even be on my website yet. That's a note to self to put it on my website. <laughs> but this is a very early, early, early announcement. Um, yeah. So, all right. So I'm curious, like, um, are there any other questions um, or anything like that before I close out this session for today? or uh, questions and or, uh, you know, feedback or anything like that. I'm, I'm happy to receive whatever you care to share. All right, okay, well, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for taking this time for yourself, with yourself and with me. Um, I am so delighted to be able to share this practice with you. It has served me so, so well. And I, yeah, and I, you know, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going to like PS because <laughs> I just realized it's like, oh, I didn't really talk so much about like how it affects healing. Um, and so I just want to offer this little PS because this was actually like a relatively recent awareness that I had around this because I was sharing this with one of the people that I was working with and I had um, reawoken like an old uh, back injury so I had you know like I was experiencing some pain in my back and as I was in the moment of sharing this practice with this person um, and it like it hadn't kind of come up where I felt like I really needed it so far that day and so it was like I was like sharing it for the first time practicing it myself for the first time that day as I was sharing it with this person um, that day and it was like as I was in this practice of like really allowing myself to be flooded with this light like allowing myself to be really filled filled to the brim and like kind of overflowing like you know letting myself feel like I'm like the lighthouse um, just shining my own like brightness and like, you know, that brightness being fueled from my connection from above and below, um, letting myself feel and receive that support and even letting myself receive that support in areas that may feel a little sticky or may feel like a little, like it's not necessarily easy to receive that support, but just like letting it be open to the possibility that you know, that it might receive that support and, and offering it that support. Um, my back just was like, oh my gosh, it felt so amazing. <laughs> it felt so much better. And I was like, whoa, I was just like blown away. 
And, um, and then I continued to practice um, this technique, like, you know, um, not only when I was around other people and in challenging situations and emotionally charged situations and during appointments and all that kind of stuff, but I just started practicing it as a self-healing tool for myself. Um, especially when I was noticing if my back was talking to me saying it was sore, I was like, okay, let's just like take five minutes and like do this thing that I know is going to like help it feel better. And it just like blew me away. And I really do feel that this um, technique, this spending this time with myself, even if it was like, sometimes it wasn't even a full five minutes. Sometimes I would just be like, you know, I'd be in the middle of something and my back would be hurting and I'd be like, okay, stop. Like, just like even give myself 30 seconds, like just like let myself reorient find my center, feel that connection, let myself like amplify it and spread it through my body. Like just that whole process, like it doesn't need to take a long time, um, especially kind of once you get into the practice of doing it, it can be like so, so fast. And I just feel like it helped me recover so much faster than I would have if I wasn't practicing this. So, so yeah, so even though I had started using it as a real like it was for me it was like I call it my like inner light warrior activation because it would be like especially when I would be like in those really intense situations where I was like oh my gosh I felt like I needed like backup or something you know I was like whoa what do I do it was just like wait okay I have backup like I have the support of the universe I have the support of the earth I have the support of the sun like I'm supported and I can keep shining um you know, like I started using it in those really intense situations um, to help me through, um, and I found it super helpful for that. Um, and um, and so that I could continue with it to not feel like I was like depleting myself because it wasn't just you know prior to this, it was almost kind of like this feeling that like I was just giving of myself. Um, and that was going to be like the most helpful force, but it really felt like that was like depleting me in that process. And so, uh, once I sort of started like, oh, right, yes, it's not just me. It's not just my heart. You know, it's like my, it's like my heart, but it's like my heart is getting this constant resupply of energy, um, from just, you know, the agreement of being human on this planet at this time. We get the beautiful sunshine light and the beautiful support of the earth and just really letting myself receive, 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 um, so that as I'm giving, it is, I'm continually getting replenished, allowing myself to receive, um, so that I have more to give and, um, yeah. And then just finding it that it actually was like, you know, bonus side benefit. It's a wonderful tool for self healing. Um, hooray. <laughs> and I think that's also what tipped over the edge to be like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta spread this around. I gotta share this with more people. So, um, because I hope it helps you for any, any and all of those circumstances. Um, so yeah, okay, well, I am gonna close out here. Thanks again for being here with me. I'm so glad. Um, thank you for your comment about it feeling super helpful. I'm so glad. Um, that's music to my ears. That is why I'm here doing this and sharing it with you. So um, again, if you wanna continue this conversation, I'm super happy to do so. You can reach out to me. Um, the easiest way is um, through my email, dove at metadove.ca. Um, or you can direct message me and if you do that on social media, I just thank you very much for your patience as I'm not on it every single day. So thanks again and uh, yeah, we'll talk soon.